Welcome to Nihilus Narrates, The Hunting of the Snark, by Lewis Carroll. Fit the Sixth, The Barrister's Dream. They sought it with thimbles, they sought it with care, they pursued it with forks and hope. They threatened its life with a railway share, they charmed it with smiles and soap. But the barrister, weary of proving in vain that the beaver's lace-making was wrong, fell asleep and in dreams saw the creature quite plain that his fancy had dwelt on so long. He dreamt that he stood in a shadowy court with a snark, with a glass in its eye, dressed in gown, bands, and wig, was defending a pig on the charge of deserting its sty. The witnesses proved without error or flaw that the sty was deserted when found, and the judge kept explaining the state of the law in the soft undercurrent of sound. The indictment had never been clearly expressed, and it seemed that the snark had begun, and had broken three hours before anyone guessed what the pig was supposed to have done. The jury had each formed a different view long before the indictment was read, and they all spoke at once so that none of them knew one word that the others had said. You must know, said the judge, but the snark exclaimed, Fudge! That statue is obsolete quite! Let me tell you, my friends, the whole question depends on the ancient manorial right. In the matter of treason, the pig would appear to have aided but scarcely abetted. While the charge of insolvency fails, it is clear. If you grant the plea, never indebted. The fact of desertion I will not dispute, but its guilt, as I trust, is removed, so far as relates to the costs of this suit, by the alibi which it has proved. My poor client's fate now depends on your votes. Here the speaker sat down in his place, as directed the judge to refer to his notes, and briefly to sum up the case. But the judge said he never had summed up before, so the snark undertook it instead, and summed it so well that it came to far more than the witnesses ever had said. When the verdict was called for, the jury declined, and the word was so puzzling to spell but they ventured to hope that the snark wouldn't mind undertaking that duty as well. So the snark found the verdict, although, as it owned, it was spent with the toils of the day. When it said the word guilty, the jury all groaned, and some of them fainted away. When the snark pronounced sentence, the judge, being quiet, too nervous to utter a word, when it rose to its feet, there was silence like night, and the fall of a pin might be heard. Transportation for life was the sentence it gave, and then to be fined forty pound. The jury all cheered, though the judge said he feared that the phrase was not legally sound. But the wild exultation was suddenly checked when the jailer informed then, with tears, such a sentence would not have the slightest effect, as the pig had been dead for some years. The judge left the court looking deeply disgusted, but the snark, though a little aghast, as the lawyer to whom the defense was entrusted, went bellowing on to the last. Thus the barrister dreamed, while the bellowing seemed to grow every moment more clear, till he woke to the knell of a furious bell, which the bellman rang close at his ear. Hope you enjoyed the sixth part of this silly tale. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.